Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at a Nintendo 64 game. Xena Warrior Princess, The Talisman of Fate. And since we're doing an N64 game, I figured we had to do this right. So, I'll be right back. Alright, let's do this. people might not know this about me, but I'm a huge fan of Xena. I mean, I've got the complete series on DVD, I've got the 10th anniversary collection, I've got naked pictures of Lucy Lawless on my computer. Wait! Anyway, when I first came across this game, I was kind of hesitant to get it because, well, it was only $2 at my local video game store. And that usually doesn't bode confidence in me. Uh, let's go ahead and dust off our N64 controllers and see what we have to work with. Xena Warrior Princess The Talisman of Fate is an N64 exclusive released in 1999 based off of the popular TV show. The game was published by Titus Software and, well, they only make quality games. You can take control of one of ten characters from the show and an all-new character that was created just for the game, and you face each other in MORTAL COMBAT! Uh, I, I mean regular combat. The basic plot of the game is that there's the Talisman of Fate, which allows the wielder complete control over the fate of all mankind. Xena and Despair both touch the Talisman at the same time, and are forced to hold a grand tournament of good versus evil, friend versus friend, to decide the destiny of humanity. A pretty cookie cutter formula for a fighting game, and in all honesty it is a Mortal Kombat clone. And it's a poor one at best. I mean, I'd rather play Sub-Zero than this, and I sold Sub-Zero and willingly bought this. Now, a Xena fighting game, it should be a no-brainer, but there are a few things that our dream team down at Titus managed to mess up. For starters, the 3D environment makes the controls very broken. When the camera angle switches, you can end up moving in completely opposite directions that you were before, or even worse, towards your enemy while they're laying out an Eddie Gordo-style combo on you. Also, I don't know if it was just me, but I felt like the hit detection was really off and that the character reaction was delayed. I mean, I would attempt to lay out a 5 or 6 hit combo and end up continuously swinging long after my button mashing had ended. And speaking of button mashing, this game is more of a button masher than any other fighting game I've played in the past few years, and as a retro gaming collector, that's quite a few fighting games. Now, in any Mortal Kombat clone, there is bound to be a set of special moves, and since Xena is already known for breaking the laws of physics and bending them over backwards, you would think that there would be a treasure trove of specials. Well, that's not the case. Each character has a whopping two let me count those again. Two special moves, which consist of left-right punch, left-right kick combinations. That's unacceptable. With the things that you see just in the first two episodes of the show, there should be at least four or five different combos for each character. Instead, we get two, and they don't even switch between fighters. It's usually left-right high kick, left-right low kick, left-right high punch, left-right low punch. And also, all of the fighting moves are broken down to just the C buttons. Now in any good fighting game, the characters grow gradually stronger from level to level as you progress through story mode. However, in this game, they just block more. A lot more, and they drain the clock while they're doing it. I mean, this game is literally cheating, and it makes it virtually unplayable. But as an N64 game, it was, you know, four-player capability, marketed in most areas as a party game. Let me tell you, if you brought this out at a party, unless it's open bar, I'm out of there, and you're not making me stay. Go buy one of the Mario Party games. Vastly superior for a party game. Alright. We've covered controls, special moves, and the target audience. But how does the game hold up graphic-wise? Well, not so great. I mean, it does have relatively nice polygonal figures, and you can definitely tell the difference from one character to another. 
but I feel like Xena deserved better. And only one new character, come on. I mean, if you're going to make a game, make something worth playing. At least in Marvel Nemesis, we got a whole new slew of faces to play as. They could have had Hercules as an unlockable, or any of the gods as reward characters, but instead we only got Despair, whose name fit the game perfectly. Overall, The Talisman of Fate is a budget title at best, and I feel the $2 that I spent on it, I got my money's worth. I feel sorry for anyone that bought this at full retail when it originally came out, I reward the game 3 out of 10 and suggest it only to hardcore Xena fans or fans of bad games. I hope you've enjoyed this video game review. This is Psychodrama signing off. I don't mean to be so insolent, but you know it's because I love you. The foundation of my malevolence, you know I'd never hurt you, babe.